I have been having a mostly great time on Hyperland. It is very, very, very far from perfect, but I stand by the fact that it's still a better W Root experience than running Sway. And unlike many of its competitors, it includes a lot of really cool racing features and random other things you wouldn't just expect to be there. So today what we're going to do is go over the five best features available in Hyperland. And I think the best place to start is with the visuals. The decoration system is so far ahead of almost all of the competition. Obviously you have the common things you expect to see like transparency, blur, window gaps, because every tiling window manager needs window gaps. Window gaps are objectively good. But how about drop shadows with a full range of customization like range, power, coloring, and things like that? How about dimming windows when a window is inactive? Personally, I find this really, really annoying, but it could be useful if you're the kind of person who wants to have a very, very clear attention point. And even some really nice additions to common expected features. When you have a transparent window and that window is tiling, obviously what you're gonna see behind it is your wallpaper. But if you have a floating window, that window is gonna have other windows behind it. But there is an X-ray mode where instead of showing those windows behind it, it is just going to show your wallpaper. This is toggleable, so if you want to see the windows behind it, you can. If you don't want to see them, like in my case, you can just enable X-ray and it just works. Or how about window borders? Most window managers have the ability to configure borders based on whether you're focused or not focused. You can have completely separate colors. But what about a gradient border? Rather than just having a single color border, why not have a border that goes from red to green, from yellow to pink, from blue to white? You can do it. Or how about rounded corners? Now, a lot of people probably aren't going to like them, but I do think they look kind of neat. Now, the second feature is probably the first thing you're going to notice on any Hyperland desktop, that being the animations. Now, during my time on Linux, I've used i3, BSPWM, Awesome WM, and on the Xorg side, animations are generally handled by your compositor. Over on the Wayland side, I've also used Sway, and Sway has no animations. So this is the first time I've used a window manager that has any form of animation system. And I kind of like it. Now my animations I tend to keep fairly simple. And I've stripped out some of the defaults because I find them kind of annoying. Now animations in Hyperland are structured as a tree where the sub animations will inherit their properties from the parent animation. So if you're using an animation like window close or window open, that is going to inherit properties from the window group itself. Now these top level components, at least right now, are windows, fade, border, border angle, and workspace. So if you wanna have a consistent setting across both of those sub animations, what you can do is set that property in the parent and then you don't have to set it in the children. But maybe you wanna have most things in the group consistent, but then one random thing be another value. That can then be set separately without affecting the rest of them. And with these animations, while it does set up things as a default, you are not locked to a specific Bezier curve. So if you wanna go and modify to make it completely different, you're entirely free to do so. Now. I have no idea how all of this animation stuff actually works. I just mess with things until I think it looks good and then go from there. But if you're the sort of person who likes to tweak things and make it play out exactly the way you want it to, that power is going to be there for you. Now, while there may have been some differences with how those features worked the last time I used Hyperland, they absolutely still existed. One thing that didn't is our third feature, that being the Hyperland plugin system, which by itself may not sound that crazy. 
and without community support, it probably wouldn't be. There is a officially supported repo that contains some things that Vaxry didn't want to include in the main project, but felt like they should be available as features like hyper bars and borders plus plus to have a double border. But what made this incredibly cool is the community. So right now, there is a system to have split workspaces between the monitors. On Hyperland normally, if you wanna have the workspaces one to 10 and you have multiple monitors, you would have to go and allocate certain spaces to certain monitors. This lets you have it work more like awesome where you can have one to 10 separately on each of your monitors. There is another plugin called Hyper River. This lets you use river layouts inside of Hyperland. So you get all the power of river while still using Hyperland. Also, there is even a plugin manager. There's not even that many plugins you may want to be using, but as this grows into the future, Hyperload might be incredibly useful. And there are a couple of other random plugins as well, mainly things like different layouts, but I wouldn't be surprised if in the future, there are some crazy plugins that completely change how Hyperland works. Now, for the fourth feature, we cannot forget the thing that I will never stop talking about, Hyperland's global hotkeys. I absolutely love the fact that I can actually have my keyboard doing what I want it to be doing in OBS. This makes it so much easier to use and there is absolutely zero shot I am ever using a whale on desktop again that does not have global hotkeys actually working. Now, the global hotkeys in Hyperland are not the portal variety. The portal hotkeys are still kind of a work in progress, and the applications you want to be using them on don't actually support the portal. Pretty much the only thing that supports it is a testing application to make sure the portal actually works. So the way it works in Hyperland is basically allowing an application to listen in on certain keys. And that application can then do whatever it wants with those keys. So in the case of OBS, I have a bunch of my F keys bound to do various operations in the application, like changing my scenes, starting and stopping recording and things like that. Now, while I do see people watch my videos on global hotkeys, I also understand the fact that not everybody cares. For a lot of users out there, this feature missing may not even remotely matter. All it affects is OBS, a couple of other applications, and applications with push to talk. The push to talk not working is probably the biggest reason why regular people would care about global hotkeys, but either way, I think this is really important, and for me, without this feature, a desktop is completely unusable. And the final feature, feature number five, is the Hyperland portal. This is a fork of the WL Roots portal. This provides all of your XDG portal functionality, and for the most part, they are feature identical. You can even go and use the Hyperland portal on a regular WL Roots desktop like Sway, River, things like that. But if you are using it on Hyperland, it is going to have a couple of additional features. One of those being window capture actually working. So if you want to go and capture, say, my browser window here, you can capture the window without capturing the entire desktop. It is such a useful feature, and every time I do my podcast, I am using it. I could just go and capture my desktop and make sure the window doesn't move, but sometimes the window moves, and I want the capture to just stay on the window and worry about nothing else. Now, because it's a fork, a lot of the heavy lifting is already done, allowing the developers to work on extra things which may not be that important for every single user, maybe just additional things that don't particularly matter. One of those being the x Wayland Video Bridge. This was a project that came out of a couple of KDE developers to allow Discord and other applications to actually capture things properly on Wayland. And this was an issue to get it working on Hyperland. Also, unlike the WL Roots portal, now it also remembers your selections so I don't have to select my monitors 
every time I open OBS. But also nicely, it includes this nice little GUI interface to easily work out what you're trying to select, work out different windows to select. Sure, you could just go and use the Grim solution over on W or Roots, but I do like having everything in this one little neat interface. And finally, I want to give an honourable mention to the Hyperland wiki. This isn't really a feature of Hyperland, but I didn't think I could do this video without at least mentioning it. This includes every single thing you could possibly want to know about Hyperland. If you're running Hyperland, this is going to be your best friend. Also, it is versioned. So if you happen to be running a slightly out of date version or you're not running the Git version, it's very, very clear what version you are currently looking at. And if something is missing or something doesn't work, make sure you check you're on the right version. So let me know your thoughts. Do you run Hyperland? Would your set of features be completely different? Or maybe you're considering trying it out and some of these features sound kind of compelling to you. I would love to know. So if you like this video, go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scribe, Silly, Bear, Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and... Exorg is bad.